All right, hey, I got a new product to show you guys. Pretty stoked. This is Dietra Heat Peel and Stick. I know it sounds a little weird. Uh, peel and Stick is one of those things where, I don't know, make it what you will, but I want to try it out and let you guys in on it so that you guys can see and decide for yourself if you want to use it or not. So the first thing we did and what I noticed is we were planning on doing this yesterday. So we came in, we cut everything, had it all laid out. I came in ready to peel and stick it. And what I noticed was when I rubbed my hand on the, on the slab, even though we rinsed it, Spencer, how many times did you rinse? Like good, two wipe downs. Yeah. So we did a couple of good wipe downs with a sponge, uh, but still I ran my hand across it and there was a light dust. And I knew right then I was like, this isn't going to stick good. This slab has to be like primed and clean. So what we had to do, run back to the shop, got some primer and put a co good coat of primer. Did we do one or two coats of primer? We did one coat. Just, just one good coat of primer. I didn't use Schluter's primer. They do have a primer. I just used uh, some, some self-leveling underlayment primer that I had and it's worked really well. Now that when I rub my hand on this, it's a clean surface. There's no dust, nothing's coming off. So yeah, now we're ready to roll, but that was a little hiccup. You know, I, I was trying to save time. I, I thought this peel and stick is going to save a ton of time. We just walk in, peel it, stick it down. No, the subfloor still has to be prepped. And I would say that on any job site, uh, this house has been here for over 20 years and it still had original drywall dust, paint dust down on the floor on this concrete that needed to be primed. Uh, if it was maybe a brand new plywood floor, I could see maybe you could do it without any primer. But even most plywood in homes is going to be old and probably needs to be primed. So I'd almost figure you're going to have to prime it. And that process takes at least a couple hours for that primer to go down and dry. So something to keep in mind. But now that we have that done, we're ready to rock and roll. So we got it all pre-cut. And I'm going to go ahead and start sticking. I, I don't really, I'm trying to kind of wrap my mind around how I'm going to peel it, keep everything in line. But I think I'm just going to start maybe on this edge because I know where it's going to be right there and then just start peeling. And I think once I get like a little section, then I'm going to roll up the other end and I should be able to go the other direction, but we'll see. So it just has this film that comes right off. And the underside is sticky, has a pressure sensitive adhesive that will stick down. Uh, pressure sensitive adhesives have been used forever. Most of them are trial down. They use them in uh, like vinyl floor installations. And the more you step on it or put pressure on it, the more that adhesive locks into the substrate. So apparently you can, you can stick this down on the first try. You know, say I do this. And just kind of get it where I want it. Supposedly, you can still lift it up, which you can. So that, that pressure sensitive adhesive hasn't really locked in yet. So I'm just going to kind of place it right there. And then that's what I was saying. I think now that I kind of have a start, just get it laid down. I'm going to roll up the other end and I should be able to go the other direction. tricky too because I got a toe kick right so I can't just roll it out. We'll, we'll see how this goes. So now I can... Oh, what the heck man? Why is this... Uh... So the peel part split for some reason. I don't know if it's supposed to be. Split. Okay, there we go. Okay, now it's in. Let's see that film split, so maybe watch out for that because if this would have stuck down, that would have been good. Alright, let's see what happens here. I 
think that worked out pretty good. I might be a little out of square, huh, Spencer? Just a hair. Yeah, it looks pretty good with this one. I'm tight on the toe kick right here. Tight here and loose down there, so I don't know if I need to adjust. See if I'm square with the rest of the room. And you don't want to step on it, because I don't I'm not sure if this is where I want it to go. Don't step on it until you're sure you know exactly where it's supposed to be. I'm 53 and a quarter. Fifty-two and a half. So yeah, I need to lift this up, push it back in that way. Let's see if it'll still come up. Pretty good right there. See, that took a little work though. Like trying to move it around like that. The toe kick really kind of, you go under stuff, that kind of presents a little issue. So I also noticed that. Oh, it was, that's why. Yeah, you don't want to forget any of these little films because I had a notch. The film didn't peel off all the way right there. But it's on the side. Base piece, it's down, it's it's ready to go. Get the air out of it. And you can use a wood float, or this is Spencer's uh, magnesium float, to to lock in that pressure sensitive.
feel solid. And yeah, it doesn't want to come up now. So I think this piece is down. I think it's done. So I don't think there's any taking it up. I don't want to try it. I think it would damage the feature heat. So I got this piece. I'm going to do the toilet room now. Uh, one thing is you want to try to line the lugs up, which they do. So lugs are going straight this way. I'll line them up. And it's okay if you have a little gap in between sheets. That's not going to kill us. So um, this one should be easier. Should be. Let's see if it peels off all in one piece or if it leaves that. Yeah, okay. So, in hindsight, I probably should have peeled half to line it up because just from, you've noticed, just from laying it down with no pressure, it wanted to grab because that prime surface is so sticky. Uh, but I got the lugs lined up. And there is uh, one thing I'm noticing is there's quite a bit of plastic waste from this film, but you could always recycle it just like you would painter's plastic or whatever. I could be uh, imagining things, but I just put a new blade on there. 
and yeah, it seems a little harder to cut through. Did you notice that yesterday, Spencer, or was it the same? Yeah, I think it's the, the adhesive on the back kind of gums up the blade real quick. Yeah, yeah, so another thing to notice. Okay, I think I got this one where I want. So I'm gonna do this here. Yeah, when you're doing these runs, I think if you can just get just get the first part started and lined up. Then you can roll up the other side. Go this way. Nice thing with this feature heat also is an uncoupling membrane. You can see this big crack that we got going through here. It's about an eight, eighth inch thick and it's kind of right on the edge where you may need to epoxy and fill this guy. But there's no uh, vertical displacement between the slab. So it was just a shrinkage crack. It was a movement that, you know, just split the slab that way. When they have vertical displacement between the two sides, that's when you want to treat it with an epoxy and grind it down and maybe I'll cover that in another video how to do that okay, so, but yeah the, uh, what I was saying is the uncoupling membrane uh, not only is it holding the heating cables but it's also uh, bridging this crack so that any stresses down below horizontal movement aren't going to transfer up into the tile Real quick, let's go check out what. Let's go check out down the hall. Um, Zach and Ronnie are setting another little floor. Ronnie's out here making a cut, and then yeah, this is a cool little job. We wanted to do two floors, only heat the master or the primary. Excuse me. Zach's in here getting going. Are you just, are you dry laying right now, Zach? Yeah, I'm just dry laying it. Yeah, so Zach's dry laying. See, we're using the lasers. Lasers are key, man. It makes things go so much faster. So he's getting everything dry laid in. We put this RSS board down on the floor here for one, because the, the carpet is so thick. They're getting new carpet. That's why we didn't protect it, but so we needed to bring this floor up, plus the plus that cultured marble shower uh, was lifted way up. So yeah, the nice thing about lasers is, you see, Zach just set up the laser right on that one tile. We didn't even really need to snap any lines or anything. He's just staying on. He's got his square. He'll spread his thin set and then go back and set this tile that has the laser on it. 
after he does all of this. So, looking good, Zach. Right on. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you guys stuck to my boot. <laughs> Okay, so this is probably this side. Smaller strips would be pretty easy to manage. So yeah, I'm gonna start again, just just starting it. Get the get the strip lined up with our legs. And it looks like I'll need to cut that again. These also come in, in squares, you know, if they come in little 3x3 three three squares, which might be a little easier. I've always used the rolls because we're doing a big area, but let me know what you think. If you like the squares better, if you like the rolls. just a square right you just you just peel it off and you have a little square try to line it up that's the the lining up part is harder than I thought it would be It's a lot easier to cut them on, you know, on the in between the lugs than cutting half of a lug. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. Because it doesn't have to go all the way to the wall. It's just like yeah, you see, we have gaps here. That's no big deal. Why don't you get a shot down low? Yeah, like that. All right, so we got it all done. That probably took I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. Probably could have gone faster, but it's our first time. 
first time doing anything takes a little longer, right? So, all right, let's get the cable in. We'll be ready to set tile. That's that's a nice thing. I'm gonna wait till Ronnie's done cutting there. We'll go. Maybe a one lugger there, huh? I do right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, we got room for one, uh, just a little one lugger here. Just a little filler piece. Nothing to it. All right, so it's, it's ready for cable. Uh, we're gonna get the cable going. My thought behind using the peel and stick was that, because typically when we do these and we thin set it down, that's all we can do during the day. We thin set it down because you don't, I mean, you can walk on it right after you thin set it down, but you really don't want to disturb it, right? Because that mortar is still setting up. And if you did anything that broke the bond, it's not good. Uh, so I've noticed that when, we, when we're snapping our cables in, and if you do an area, because a lot of times, you'll see when I'm running this cable, a lot of times you got to, peel the cable up, reroute it, and when you peel it up, it has some force to it, and it will want to pull up the cable sometimes. So usually what we do is we just thin sit down the cable, and then that's it for the day. We walk away and can't do anything else. Uh, but with this, I was thinking, you know, if we can peel and stick it down, it's ready for not only cable, but we can set tile on it because this stuff is, it's stuck down. It's not like if you're setting a tile and you have to pop a tile and it creates that suction, it's not gonna pull this Dietrich heat up. It's gonna be stuck down. So you can not only get your cable in, but you could also set the floor, which we're gonna to attempt to do today. We'll see how it goes. All right, so we got all the Dietrich heat cable down. It took a little minute here. We got most of it down and realized we were just short. We were like six feet short on this toe kick. This is a pretty important area. You don't want their toes to get cold by the sink. So we just had to reroute it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that longer runs eat up less cable. So if you need to stretch your cable, try to do longer runs and not so many turns. Every time you do a turn, it's gonna shrink the square footage that you can use. So went down really good. I'm pretty stoked on this. We started doing this about 8.30 and it's about 10 o'clock right now. So an hour and a half, we went from bare slab to ready for tile with the Dietrich heat, and this is a pretty big area. So all in all, I'm pretty impressed with this peel and stick. I think it has its purpose. Uh, if, if you want to get on and tile the same day, it's very good. I'm not worried about it ever coming up. Pressure sensitive adhesive has been used for a long, long time in the vinyl flooring industry. And the thing is, the more you walk on it over time, the more that glue is gonna bond. So one thing to keep in mind too, if you're gonna go into a shower, uh, this does not meet ANSI, it doesn't meet the ANSI specifications for a shower. So I think in that circumstance, you need to use the thin set down, you can't use the peel and stick, but for any other bathroom floor that's not in a wet area, this peel and stick is good to go. So I'm pretty impressed. Thanks again for watching. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, I feel really blessed to be able to share this information with you. It gives me purpose, makes me feel better. So I just thank you for being here and watching. And I love you. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.